Close. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, doing this problem. Now, there's an important thing that I want you guys to understand when we're doing a word problem, just like we did with the four-step problems. Word problems are just like the ACT. The reason why we spend a lot of time with the ACT and stuff like that is to take a problem like this and understand what exactly are we trying to figure out. So whenever you're dealing with a word problem, because it really frustrates me, you know, we get to word problems, a lot of you will just shut down because you're like, oh, I know this word problem is going to be too tough you know, for me to handle, so I'm not even going to try it. But let's try to break down the word problem into smaller steps and see how feasible and actually easy the problem really can be to go ahead and create. The first thing I think you need to understand when doing a word problem is understand what exactly they are asking. So usually at the end is kind of where they get to tell us, and we just need to focus on that. It says, how many of each room does the hotel have? So we need to understand, so there's, ro there's rooms, right? We need to know how many, right? How much? How many? Well, what type of rooms do we have? So we go back through the information, and it says there's rooms that, f that have a kitchen, and there's rooms that do not have a kitchen. So therefore, there's two things that we need to find how many they have, right? Right? That's what we're trying to figure out. We want to know how many rooms have a kitchen and how many rooms don't have a kitchen in the hotel. So to, to find those values, I need to assign them variables. <coughs> All right? So I can say x equals the number of rooms with a kitchen, and y equals the number of rooms without a kitchen. Does that seem pretty simple enough? We need to know how many, so that's why I want to know the number, right? That's what we're trying to figure out. But the thing, guys, the whole like, key to being able to solve this is identifying your variables. Because once we have variables, to solve for variables, we need to create equations. And this is usually the most difficult part of the process, is creating these equations. Well, one equation says the, whole, the hotel has a total of 200 rooms. So if you had, uh, you could have 100 rooms with a kitchen and 100 rooms without a kitchen, right? That would be 200. So you're adding the number of rooms together. So I can just say x plus y equals 200. That's one equation. The next equation is going to be a um, revenue equation. And if you think about it, they said, you know, a room costs $100 a night. So if you have one room, you get $100. Two rooms, there's $200. Three rooms, $300. And basically what you're doing is taking however many rooms that you have that you rent out with a, with a kitchen, you multiply that number by 100, because that's how much you bring in, right? If I said, oh, we rented out 17 rooms, how much money would that be? You just multiply 17 times 100. Yes, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the same thing is for y. However many rooms we rent without a kitchen, we're just going to multiply that number of rooms by 80. And we know that the revenue, the total of the revenue, is $17,000. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have created a system of equations that is just like what we have done um, before. So we just need to pick a variable to solve for. I'm going to pick for x. So I'll say x uh, is equal to negative y plus 200. Does everybody follow me on what I did up top? Yes? And then we take that and we plug it into our other equation. So I have 100 times negative y plus 200 plus 80y equals 17,000. Apply distributive property. Combine like terms. Does everybody see what I've done so far? And now I'm just solving for y. So I'll subtract 20,000. So I have negative 20y is equal to a negative 3,000. Then to solve for y, I'll divide by negative 20 on both sides. And I get y equals 150. 
So now I know that the number of to the total number of rooms that have um, the, or that do not have a kitchen is 150. Now to find the value of x, I'll plug in 150 in for y. So I say x equals negative 150 plus 200. X equals 50. So therefore, the number of rooms that have a um, kitchen is 50. The number of rooms that do not are 150. Make sense?